Hey guys, it's me, EOD Gamer here, and in this video, I'm super excited to be back with another which is the better investment of the banner characters. Very, very strong DPSs, both of them, Jing Liu and Akron. One is going to be out in the first half of 2.1. Jing uh, Liu is, of course, having her rerun in the second half, but I would think that a lot of new players perhaps are sitting on the tape bench or whatever on the sides and looking at these two characters, which is the better pool for your account. This video, I promise you, for the entirety of this video, will be as unbiased and honest in terms of logically comparing both of them. I'll state out the facts as well. If you care about my personal opinion, biased thoughts, I'll leave it right at the end, uh, which I'll share with you my personal choice between the two of them as well. So let's start off first. You know we don't waste time on this channel. Let's talk about the current value of these two characters because we want to know if we are spending our resources now and not waiting for a rerun of these characters in future what can these two actually give my account right now and who actually offers better investment i'll start off first by saying you can't go wrong with other of these characters especially if you are, your account is like not overloaded with dps's you have like every single other dps in the game you really can't go wrong with picking up either one of these two but in my opinion the more efficient pick is the one that can do a lot more for lesser resources. If you think about uh, Honkai Star as a whole, it really is a resource management game. The less characters you need to pull to fulfill a certain 36 star requirement or pure fiction clear, uh, the mean means that your every pre uh, stellar jade that you spend has much higher return on your value. For that reason, I would say that Akron ranks a little bit higher in current value in the climate that she, that you currently can get if you're a person that are, maybe you just joined in Panagony, you're a very new player. The reason what makes her much stronger is she has this thing called a colorless breaking system. For those of you who don't know, Xue Yi is another similar character like that, just very single target. She can break all sorts of weaknesses with her out, follow out attacks with some Eidolons and stuff. And Akron has this in her kit as well in an AOE fashion. Why is this very, very strong? It doesn't matter whether you're tackling Ice Weakness content, Lightning Weakness content, Fire content. Uh, some people who only have like one DPS, for example, like Jing Liu, you'll find it very hard because you need to switch out your gear. You need to bring in like Argenti when you need like physical break. You need a Himiko for fire break. Uh, you get none, you care about none of that with a character that has colorless breaking system like Akron. Colorless meaning like that Pokemon colorless icon where you can use it for any element in the same fashion that I think why Akron is very strong. It's also... One of the reasons why people say Silver Wolf is super, super good because Silver Wolf is able to like drop weaknesses on the enemy so you can tackle a lot of content with the exact same uh, DPS that you get. On top of that, if you're talking about using characters in the game, Akron works fantastic with debuffers that are currently like in the meta. You can use Silver Wolf, you can use a character like Pella who's also going to be on her banner, the first banner of Akron. Very, very good synergies. I think these are very, very strong supports already. A lot of defense breaking system in them. Uh, and also, Akron is able to play into like DOT teams, maybe semi-DOT teams with characters like Kafka maybe, like Black Swan who also have some sort of defense shredding. DOT counts as a debuff, so that's interesting to note. On the other hand, um, Slightly less versatile in that sense will be Ting Liu, who is unable to play both into like a DOT meta, which now Honkai Star is starting to turn into, especially since the arrival of uh, Black Swan, the uh, debuffs, nihility, seem to be having a little bit more attention lately uh, when we are talking about like currently, current game state. Ting Liu, on the other hand, I don't think that she loses in every single category to Akron. One thing that people forget about Ting Liu, and now let's like go over to see the benefits of Ting Liu on the other hand. There are synergies that she has with characters that are very, very meta. For example, a free-to-play Tingyun, you will see anywhere now if you like search any kind of content. Tingyun is like rated very highly on by the whole entire community. And what she does is she offers like, a huge amounts of attack buffing. She offers a lot of energy restoration into a hyper carry style character, which is very resource efficient to build. For Akron, maybe you need to build a couple more characters who deal like a bit more debuffs. Maybe you need like a specific set of characters because she doesn't scale off with energy restoration. She can't have like energy, energy restoration link rope tripping on my words here. But yeah, uh, a lot of characters like for example, Ting Yun and Ho Ho, if your account revolves around energy restoration and these characters, having Ting Liu will make your account a little bit more flexible because you can easily just slot in characters that you already have. These two characters like Ting Yun and Ho Ho might not work super well uh, together with Akron because she doesn't, Akron doesn't need any of the energy restoration aspect. So in that, in my opinion, that is one thing that differentiates um, Ting Liu and, for example, Akron. 
but now that we talked a little bit about their current value in the current game state and how things are changing, we need to look at the alternatives as well for these characters because there's no point um, calling them good investments based on their current value if, we, if a, like a million other characters can do exactly what they can do. Let's start off first with the one that is probably easier to talk about, which is Jing Liu. What is making her unique right now is she plays into a, not only an ice uh, element, so we are talking about characters with ice weakness breaking. Maybe you have Herta, you can argue pure fiction, Herta might sometimes be better uh, for the most part. You have characters like Misha, who is also an ice weakness breaker, maybe not the best. You have Pella, who is ice element, but also not super good at um, weakness breaking as well. She's more of like a supportive debuffer. You have Mark 7, who is okay as well, but also not the same kind of leak of Jing Liu. So in my opinion, like Jing Liu is on a class of her own in terms of the ice, addressing ice weakness enemies probably Ting Liu is still has very, very little competition. But that's not, all, not the only like category that we have to care about, right? Because other than being an ice weakness um, breaker and ice element herself, she is also a hyper carry-ish kind of unit, which is very similar to characters, for example, like um, in My Better Lune. Some would compare them side by side, especially because they were released around the same time. They are both of destruction class as well. So depends on what kind of style you are going for. If you already have like an Imbibate Lune hyper carry and you have units like Sparkle dedicated for him, getting another of a similar style instead of diversifying your pool into maybe a different kind of unit altogether, you can't play these two characters here with DOT. So if the meta switches into like a DOT meta, a debuff meta, you might struggle a little bit, especially depending on the roster that you have since they are relatively close alternatives in terms of stylistic presence. They, of course, they scale with different things as well. One thing for sure though, that um, Ting Liu uh, is very, very strong for, is that um, she can play into a double hyper carry teams. You can play her into a, a Ting Liu on her own, or if maybe you are a Blade fan, you can of course play her together with Blade. That is one thing that uh, distinguishes herself from other of the other alternatives that she has in the game. So that is for Ting Liu's aspect. For Acheron's aspect, I would say that if you are talking about a pure replacement for her in any team, I would say there's none. Um, but if you break it down individually in terms of the sub-segments, if you're talking about colorless breakers, you have a character, for example, like Xue Yi, who is also something like can break any element. So that is a bit of an alternative, but she's very single target, doesn't have five-star stats. Akra has it in an AOE fashion, five-star stats, um, and scales off very differently from Xue Yi. So that is, I think, the closest alternative for that section. If you are talking, again, about just Lightning Nihility as a class, or Lightning AoE damage dealers, you have a lot of Lightning AoE damage dealers. You have Kafka, you have a character like Serval, you have a character like Jing Yuan. Uh, they are all alternatives in this faction. You, some people might be laughing, you forgot about Ireland again. Okay, let me just put Ireland in here just to have the, the complete picture over here. So there is a lot of Lightning DPSs in the game. She distinguishes herself, Akron, of course, by being able to have that colorless breaking system. But at the same time, Akron can play a lot with the other Lightning characters in the game too. You can play with Kafka. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Shock and DOT are considered as debuffs. Um, and if you even have like Kafka's E1, E2, you might get even some enhancements of like DOT amplification. Serba also provides some sort of Shock. So she can play well into some of these uh, characters too. And at the same time, the more Lightning units there are in the game means you can benefit also from Land of Dream set, Panakini Land of Dreams. You can put in like a Lightning DPS. Or maybe if one day we have like a 5-star Lightning Harmony unit that is not Ting Yun and doesn't funnel energy, it might be even better for her in terms of upside, but we'll talk about that uh, in a little bit. So Lightning category we have is quite competitive, but uh, one thing for sure is Akron can play to many, many team compositions. You can play her into crit teams. You can play her into like hyper carry teams. You can play even her into like DOT teams because that is considered as a debuff for her as well. The only team you can't really play her into is uh, energy funneling teams, which utilize Ho Ho and utilize, for example, Ting Yun as a, a, as a bedrock for... Uh, hyper carrying. So that, I'll talk about it in a bit, but I think this is a very, very huge caveat that you want to take note on the back of your mind. It does implicate some things that we're going to talk about, especially in the later category. So that is my thoughts on alternatives in this camp. You can really play Akron in quite a few places, fewer alternatives than Jing Liu, who does have some alternatives, um, especially if you're talking about stylistic in the hyper carry space too. The next thing that I want to talk about. Now that we've seen about the present and whatnot, we've talked a lot about what current value they offer. The next best logical uh, thought process is what is going to be better 
for the future. This is important because you don't just want to buy a character now and then one patch later, power creep completely, totally useless, nothing happens thereafter. Um, and this is where we're going to talk about it. Future value. Where do I see these characters going? It's very clear that Hoyoverse has, has a trend. They started off with Black Swan, with the Nihility debuff kind of thing. They introduced characters like Adventuring, trying to build into follow-up attackers, stylistic where you have like, DOT is generally multiple DPS, follow-up generally is multiple DPS, and you can kind of see like that's the angle that they are trying to go into, pushing people to go from like a single DPS to multiple DPS because it helps make them more money as well when you need to build more characters rather than relying on one solo hyper carry. Granted, I think Ting Liu is not that kind of unit compared to like Imbibator Lune, he was really much more like a hyper hyper carry style. But Ting Liu is not cheap to build in a double DPS team. You probably will still need another limited 5 star like Blade uh, in that sense. But definitely the meta is shifting away from old hyper carry crit DPSs into some units that do a little bit more than that as well. And moving into tendencies like follow up, moving into tendencies like DOT teams and stuff like that. Of course, Akron can't play into DOT teams perfectly well. Uh, it's still a bit awkward for her, but neither can Ting Liu. And that's what I wanted to point out as well. So in terms of future value, Akron is here for the current game state. You likely will see if a lot of people are pulling for that particular unit, Hoyoverse won't uh, make that character irrelevant too quickly. So you at least have some longevity for that particular unit over a period of time. Whereas if you just take like a backdated information, look when Ting Liu first came out, she was super hyped. The community loved her. She was meta for a really, really long period of time. Uh, so at least you will get your money's worth for a good three to four months in terms of the future value of like other characters coming to the game, power creeping. One other thing I want to talk about, which is really more into the potential side of things. Future value is more concrete in how I analyze like trends that are happening. Potential is looking at softer things which might not be as accurate, but it's still worthwhile considering. And it's Hoyo versus trends and their nature of bringing characters into the game. Units that have this like Raiden Mei or Raiden Shogun kind of unit uh, background, they tend to be quite strong because it's their Honkai IP that they want to like sell across all different patches. We were just talking about this the other day, why Honkai Star Rail or, or Hoover's games don't do too much collaborations uh, on Discord as well as live and you can check us out there as well. If you're finding value in this video so far, just to sidetrack, do like and subscribe this kind of content. I do this every single patch and I'll be making more for a lot of other characters that they are being rerun too. But anyways, um, they tend to make their Honkai Star Rail, uh, like how the collaborations is being done, is they'll bring characters from their other Hoyoverse, uh, their other Metaverse characters into each of the other games because they play into like many different verticals. You won't want to make a character from your other verticals that's very popular and then ruin that whole IP because it's like a trash character that's going to get power creep in one time. So the odds of Akron being irrelevant in a couple of patches is very, very low because it doesn't do Hoyoverse any justice as well. And that is like my honest opinion of what I think logically is going to happen. Whereas a character like Ting Liu is very fresh, is more signature to Honkai Star Rail. And we all understand as gamers is gacha games, turn-based games tend to undergo power creep here and there. Not saying that she's going to get power creep, but her popularity might not be a thing that um, Hoyoverse is considering. Instead, they're going to be focusing a lot of attention on making Akron relevant, maybe introducing new supports to make her even better and making her like super flashy since she's like a superstar in the Panicony up as well. So that's my thought on the potential uh, section. Now, up till this point, I think some of you watching this video will be saying that the the odds are it's actually quite clear to see which is the better character right now in 2.0 Panicony. And I don't disagree, except for this one last category, which is the biggest and the biggest downside of Akron in my opinion. Unfortunately, Akron is a nihility character and not a destruction character, not a hunt character, not an erudition character. Why is that a downside? She is a DPS, a, it can be a hyper carry, carry kind of DPS without the access to a lot of crit rate, crit damage gear in an AOE fashion. The only crit gear I think in the nihility category that we have currently is um, Silverwolf Signature Light Cone and likely probably going to be Acheron's her own. If you look at the other free-to-play Light Cones, you don't have any crit gear. The four-star best one is probably Good Night Sleep Well, which is on, like I think, the banner Light Cones. So Hoyoverse really wants you to pull on her signature or at least pull on the signature banner because there's very, very little options for nihility characters that want to do a lot, a lot of damage. And then I think it's like the, one of the biggest cons. Whereas if you go onto the other end, you have uh, a character like Ting Liu who can work quite well 
with a lot of destruction like cones that are relatively free to play. You have new ones that came out for Panacony. You also have, for example, the, the one in Herta Light Cone Shop is not the best, but at least it's usable compared to solitary healing for Nihility characters in the Herta Shop. That's not very fantastic. If I were to make a point of comparison, Ting Liu is a lot easier for free to play to build compared to a character like Akron. If you compare like the supports like Ting Yun, who is universal for a lot of DPSs in the game, Akron can't have access to these kind of versatile, versatile characters, for example, like Ting Yun, which means you are really hugging your Pella in whatever comp you have. So if you're using for Pella in the first and second half, you will find it, you will struggle a little bit, especially when you're like, that. it's the same in the olden days where people were like thinking of where to put Ting Yun because she was used everywhere. Now Pella seems to be very, very universal, needed in most team compositions of most DPSs today because of the debuffing, the, the shredding that she he does as well. So that is a huge thing to consider. The supports that you, you need in either of your half. If you are looking to build a second half, a, a team for your next one, and you already maybe have a very solid DPS, for example, like in Barbetu Lune, chances are I think going for Akron will be a slightly better choice since you can put Ting Yun with uh, Imbabete Lune and maybe you can put Pella, for example, with Akron and then you have a very, very nice combination as well. Uh, unfortunately, if you have both Ting Liu and Akron, maybe Pella is like split down in between a little bit more, but we will see how that goes as well. Last but not least, not all Doom and Gloom. I think that Akron also has certain merits of uh, using a lot of other light cones in the game. I wouldn't say it's like free to play because there is still like the trend of universal market, which allows you to turn your defensive characters into a debuffer to help her gain stacks quicker as well. Um, we'll talk about them more in like uh, team building and stuff like that, but um, she still has some options available to her. But overall, I think if you're talking about a free-to-play player kit just brand new into the game, uh, you will find it a lot easier to build a character like Jing Liu, more straightforward, whereas compared to Akron, who might be a bit more tricky in terms of requirement, you will fill the gap as a free-to-play versus a pay-to-play player. And why do I want to talk about free-to-play kit in this category is because it's very important um, to set the mentality right. A character with E0, which means like no copies of Eidolons, and S0 without their signature like cone, and a character that must have, for example, a signature like Cone, is going to be very, very different because the level of investment is different. At their base E0, S0, I think Ting Liu has more options with the free light cones that are available. But at the same time, uh, E1, S1, I think Akron definitely is going to be a solid um, investment because of the amount of versatility she can give. The question is, are you able to afford her signature light cone or at least I like, pull a cup couple of copies of light cones as well we'll talk more in the building of how to build this character if you're interested in that you can check out our subsequent videos that will come out on the channel but here's the fun part let me talk about my personal bias uh, logic is driven very heavily by logic here very clearly that we know and we can see that Akron offers a lot more value versus the dish she plays into a lot of current trends and the whole idea that um, Hoyovers is planning to sell in the next couple of patches as well the one biggest thing that I think is not that I haven't talked about is it's quite easy to shut down Akron by removing the ability to break weaknesses altogether. For example, we have that mod in the Senzo Luofu who prevents weakness breaking. Sometimes Yen Xing also prevents you from weakness breaking at all. In that case, you are just purely relying on Akron's ability to unger bunger, and many characters can unger bunger quite well, like in Bible Lune, like Ting Liu. The main true, I think, selling point of Akron is her ability to break all sorts of weaknesses, and once they shut that down, she becomes more of a normal DPS in a very strange and stringent criteria like Nihility, which has much less access to future light cones that come out as well, not just the current ones in the game state. But my preference right now, 2.0, 2.1, I will pick uh, Akron over Ting Liu, but I can see the case that they can shut down Akron if they wanted to one year from now, two years from now in future too. And if you found this video helpful and insightful, like and subscribe for more such future content. We'll be making a lot more of these kind of videos shortly. So stay tuned to the channel and see you in the next video.